Um, then I'll go on to um, one of my favorite applications of dynamic programming. Um, this is a, a really neat version um, because it solves a um, actually very, you know, seemingly very hard problem. Um, namely, the problem is this. Um, we are uh, given points, here observations, uh, I can trivially sort them from left to right, and I now want to find a partitioning of the set of observations, and then for each segment um, I want to find obviously an, an estimate, uh, and this estimate here in each segment in this example, um, it's been made piecewise constant, um, but you can use the same technique um, to obtain an estimate uh, which is piecewise linear, uh, and that may, of course, also result in different uh, boundaries. And here, you know, it maybe looks like the segments are all of similar length, but that need not be so. You see here we have a short segment and, and a long segment. And, um, well, if somebody gives you this task, you always need to specify a parameter, like you know, how strongly do you want to regularize? And here, um, um, so regularization, or making the solution simpler, here increases to the left. Yeah, in the extreme case, we approximate everything with a single constant. Uh, on the right-hand side is the other extreme. Um, we um, find as many segments as we have observations, you know, perfect fit to our data. And somewhere in between is perhaps you know, the reasonable um, regime. And why do I say this problem is really cool or interesting? Um, because we both make discrete decisions, so where do we want to find the cuts? And within each of these segments, we then um, also make a continuous estimate. You know, we find some number on the real line uh, that tells us, all right, uh, within this segment, what was, you know, what was the height? Was it this or that or that? Yeah. Um, so we make both discrete and continuous decisions at the same time, which usually is a very hard problem. And yet it turns out that this one is a problem that can be solved to global optimality efficiently using dynamic programming. And, uh, you know, Bellman, the inventor of dynamic programming himself, he um, wrote this paper in 1961. Um, so this is one page of a journal. Uh, I'm omitting the wide margin. And uh, the paper has a length of a column and a half. I love it. <laughs> I'm laughing at that better. <laughs> um, you know, today uh, we, we do... Uh, uh, Experiments. Do you see any experiment in this in this paper? I don't. <laughs> and it's a perfectly fine paper. <laughs> so, um, I mean, you know, this thing has already been invented. But I bet you, you know, these days you have trouble, you know, submitting a publication like that. And this is wrong. This is how it should be. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. Um, good. So how does it how does it work? Uh, the main idea is the following. Uh, again, this uh, problem of you know nested subsets. So, for example, as I proceed from left to right, if I decide that um, the problem has somehow been solved optimally on the left side of this, um, and I now just want to solve the problem for the remaining right-hand side, I don't care what exactly a solution looks like on the left-hand side. What matters for me is, is there, do I make a jump here, yes or no? Uh, but conditioned on making a jump, I don't care about how many further jumps there are on the, on the left-hand side. All right, so um, in terms of uh, dynamic programming, um, that's called uh, multi way choice um, in the following sense. Let's stare at this equation. Um, let's say this uh, C is the cumulative cost up to observation number J. 
I've sorted my observations and I've numbered them, them from left to right, one through n. Yeah? And um, now I'm interested in the cumulative uh, cost of the optimal segmentation path up to and including observation j. And um, now I can do various, now, now I need to decide how far to the left uh, should I extend my current segment. And the way I do that is as follows. I take the minimum over all possible left limits of my current segment. So I take the minimum over 1 up to j. And um, I take into account the um, total cumulative cost up to that limit, which I am considering, plus I am paying uh, penalty for the jump, because I've started a new segment at uh, location or at observation i, um, plus now um, the sum of square deviations from my optimal model in the current segment. And now I need to decide what do I mean by optimum, optimal model. Do I just want a constant to get out something piecewise constant, or do I want um, a straight line um, to get uh, piecewise linear segments, or what do I want to get? And then some, um, some boundary uh, conditions. All right, so I'm showing you explicitly um, all these possibilities for only seven observations. Um, and I should maybe add another t here, cost of zero. All right, so we want to find the um, optimal cost. Let's assume perhaps that we have already um, solved iteratively um, up to and including observation number six. Now for my seventh observation, um, I have various choices. I could either start a, a new segment um, for myself, or I could say, uh, let's use, let's extend my current segment until observation number five, or let's extend my current segment until observation number four, etc. And then for each of these possible paths, um, I need to know what is the optimal cost of solving everything previously up to observation four or five or six, which is what my equation here does. And so in this graph, um, I am uh, really looking for a shortest path. And um, you know, I've given you now one example of this shortest path. Um, so here I would have uh, one segment encompassing observations uh, one and two one segment only having a single observation three, another segment for observations four, five, six, four, five, six. Um, so four, five, six, and then uh, one for the final observation. And, uh, you know, I've, I've pretended that this is the optimum solution, for example, for this problem here, where I've indicated the observations and the optimal split lines and this optimal path here I've shown in bold uh, at the bottom here. So we're really only looking for a shortest path. Um, the only thing that we need is now all these edge costs Eij. Yeah? So all these Eij, um, those are the costs of the many, many edges that you see here. And, uh, well, it would be useful to pre-compute them. And in particular, there was a small thing, uh, at least that Bellman overlooked and left to the afterworld, namely um, that these uh, EIJs themselves, they can be computed incrementally. So you don't have to um, compute the sum of square deviations from the optimum 
the variance, let's say, uh, up to, so if I use a piecewise constant model, um, this is the spread, so the variance times number of uh, observations. And um, for, you don't need to recompute this from scratch for each value of i and j, uh, but you can reuse computations. Yeah? So if I write um, the variance uh, or the spread, if I write it in uh, this format here, um, then um, you see that I have these running uh, sums and uh, they can be updated. Yeah? So if you have one observation entering from the right, one observation uh, you know, adding or subtracting observation from the left, that means you can update these things and don't need to compute them from scratch. And that means that um, you can do things as um, uh, you can use schemes as shown here. So here what I call EIJ, they call sigma. Um, you can uh, compute these uh, incrementally, as you see here, with reusing computations in itself. All right, and when you do that, <coughs> um, so that's an efficient way of uh, finding uh, all these uh, weights for the many edges that you see here. Then you find the shortest path, and uh, that gives you the line segments. And conditioned on the line segments, it's trivial to well then figure out the parameters of your model in each segment. All right. So one example of multi-way dynamic programming, and a really impressive example where um, you use dynamic programming um, to make discrete decisions, and uh, that in turn um, allows you uh, to estimate continuous parameters on the cheap. Good. Um, so this concludes our first uh, foray into efficiently solvable problems. We have um, looked at, so if we go here, we've looked today only at the shortest path, um, so um, the few lines um, that you see here, but um, many of the things that we have seen uh, actually generalize. Yeah? So much else of what's written in this column are slight variations on uh, the theme um, that we have um, just seen now. If you um, want to read up on these things, um, this is a great textbook, uh, which is available online um, uh, from the author uh, who kindly supplied this as a PDF at this address here. Um, then for, if you want to read more about the algorithms themselves, um, there are many nice slides on uh, this page here. This is based on the book by um, Sedgwick on algorithms and data structures. Uh, but there's also um, by uh, Tardosh uh, a very nice book that also Kevin Wayne, the same instructor here, has been used in teaching. Um, but anyway, this here is a good um, address if you uh, want to look at more demos for these various algorithms uh, and uh, understand what they're doing in a set of slides. Um, with that, thank you very much. Um, in the next few weeks, we will continue looking at these various efficiently solvable problems and uh, the way or the, the kind of modeling that can be used um, to employ them to solve computer vision problems. All right. Thank you very much. Have a good day and a good weekend. Bye-bye.